You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, Geek Nerd Tech, featuring a weekly roundup of tech news and gossip. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black and now, the host for Black Hollywood Live, Geek Nerd Tech. Oh, man. <laughs> you cannot, you cannot. <laughs> not Welcome. Not show. I cannot. I get to that, 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 that drum hit. <laughs> da, 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 da. Anyway, welcome to Geek Nerd Tech. Uh, it's a show where we break down all, all the nerd culture and tech news from a brown and black perspective, or black and brown, black and brown perspective. Uh, you know, I wrote that intro, <laughs> and you fumbled. <laughs> and I fumbled it. I wrote it. Let me try one more time. <clears throat> Welcome to Geek Nerd Tech, the show where we break down nerd culture, tech news from a brown and black perspective. Oh, well, there it is. Oh, I've still messed it up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm Joe Braswell. I'm your host. Jo- I'm, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm here, joined as always by Nando Velasquez. Thank you very much, sir. He'll be the brown perspective. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. <laughs> I'm joined also by my main man, Akili Shine. What's good, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. And we have, a, we have a guest in the studio today. We're, we're joined by uh, my man, Brandon. Uh oh. Mike. Brandon McKay Hearn. McKay Hearn. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got the claps. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Brandon McKay Hearn from Broccoli City is going to be joining us, uh, sitting in for, for with us uh, today. And also, we'll be talking to him a little later on about Broccoli City and what he does and and um, all the initiatives that he's responsible for and, and wanting to. I just want to say, man, yes, Brandon is one of my good dudes. And it's, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, man. And I know you're going to give some great insights, man. So thank you for coming through. Oh, thank man. you very much. Thank Brandon. you for inviting Appreciate me, you. Man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Awesome. So uh, let's let's jump into our quick hits. There's a lot of a lot of news this week. A lot of a lot of things happen. Uh, the one thing I want to start out with is I want to talk about the Oxford Dish- Dictionary introduced their word of the year because you know it's the end of the year. We we start to have these end of the year everything end of the year everything. Oxford Dish- Dictionary introduces word of the year, and this year the word is selfie, <laughs> <laughs> which you know I I want to bring that up because it, it, it speaks to our our digital culture, our uh, sharing uh, social media culture, that the number one word, and the word's not a new word, it's been around for a while, but it's this year they said it's been used, they've tracked it more than almost any other word. And runner up, of course, was binge watching, which is something you know us media types yeah. love, <laughs> a, new, a new thing. And number another runner up was twerk. Like, <laughs> twerking. Twerking. <laughs> twerk, well, well twerk was the word, well, twerking twerk, is the thing. It was it's twerking and twerk. Sure. All right, I know the verb is twerk. What you know about twerking, Nando? <laughs> I know what I like to see. <laughs> I know what I like to watch. So, but what, 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 what do we think this says about uh, our culture today? Selfies, number one. I mean, it's just interesting that it's a part of the lexicon now. I mean, me being a photographer and just the technology that you have a camera in your smartphone, the photography has become like a part of the, vernac- of the vernacular. Everyone's right. a photographer. So, I mean, I think it's a fine line between being... Um, searching for like your self identity or self expression to being very narcissistic. Like I'm, I personally don't shoot selfies of myself. Uh-huh. Like it, when we talked about this, it made me think like, would Gordon Parks ever do a selfie of himself? Mm. Langston Hughes would. You think so? I think so. Wow. <laughs> I think he would. I think Langston Hughes That's would a good have point. a selfie. I think Langston, selfie. Langston Hughes might. Gordon Parks, I don't think so. Gordon Parks, no, no. I don't think why, so. Why do you say Langston Hughes? I feel like Langston was just that type of brother to just take pictures in Harlem of himself in right. front of his brownstone. He just seems like that type of dude. Um, yeah, and that's my insight. Langston Hughes, <laughs> thank okay. you. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Nando, what do you think about selfie being the word of the year? Uh, well, I think it's. Uh, I think it's. It just shows what our culture has come to. I don't know if I agree with it 100. Uh, percent I mean, well, they didn't ask you to agree. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, already, the, it's already the word. Oxford you and I, I, I know, you, I know some, you get a vote. Oxford and I have some disagreements. No, <laughs> I mean, well, Oxford's adding it to their dictionary now, to their lexicon, these yes. words. So that's one that's of the crazy. reasons why it's the words of the year. Uh, I think it's, uh, selfie's an amazing, an amazing uh, cultural shift where I think it's just how we are so attached to our own technology as individuals that we have to take our own photos of ourselves. Right. So it's just an amazing thing to see how we have progressed that we don't connect well 
face to face as much anymore mm -hmm. as we do on computers right. to the point where, hey, I want people to see, take a look, a picture of me. I have to do it myself. Well, I mean, yeah. in the old days, you're with your friends, and yeah. you're like someone, someone, and then you can edit it as out. well. So that kind of, it kind of, in regards to us as people talking to each other and you saying, you know, yeah. people having to take pictures of themselves because they get a chance to edit it as well. So it's kind of like a block between, you know, yourself and everybody else. So it's a further, yeah, it's a further obstacle between connecting like one-on-one -on -one with somebody as opposed to using technology to show yourself, your individuality. Absolutely. And yeah. this is a great tool for artists. You know, like you said, Langston Hughes, I could totally see him do this. I Absolutely. could see, and a lot of artists do it. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, Selfie became famous because of people like Kim Kardashian. So, <laughs> okay. I mean, that's not really, uh, well, that's not really artistic, but at the same time, I, I think it's it, celebrity. I think it cheapens the art, artisticness of photography. Because you, if you think of like the history of portraiture, like when you took a portrait, you sat down, it was lit well, and you you it's exhibited the best of yourself. Like you want to you want to look like you were ro regal and royal, but now it's, it's cheap and it's like, hey, I took a quick t quick selfie of myself and mm. blasted it out. You well, know what well, I mean? Well, well right. one thing that's been interesting. Sorry, I, I just want to make this point. point this good point. Um, there's been a lot of articles now that selfies so in the forefront because of this whole news story about what makes a good selfie and what doesn't. So there are a lot of fun articles about right. like the types of selfies, like the duck face is the one right, word. Right. Yeah. Actually, I'm surprised that's not good. <laughs> that's going to probably be a word of the future as well. Yeah, you face. know, the, the selfies when people have to, like, thin their chick, oh, cheeks. Their lips. Yeah. Their lips. That's, like mm. what's, uh, that's the Blue Steel from Zoolander. Yeah, like, that's Absolutely. Blue Steel. <laughs> that's Blue <laughs> Steel. So, well, listen, I, well, we want we'll to move on, but I just yeah. want to say that I think that the, the one thing that we didn't mention here, which I do, it is about artistic expression and, and, and you know, made cheap in art, but it's really not all about self-portraits. It's really about uh, documenting your day and your and your sort of life. I mean, I think that you, this is a way for you to do, you know, uh, whether it's uh, self journaling, self blogging, photo blogging, travel log, whatever it is. I mean, it is, you know, a little bit narcissistic, but there is a log if you say that, like I was here today, or I was in front of the Eiffel Tower today, or yeah. I was here. I mean, it could be like I was at the coffee shop. Now I'm at the stove. Now I'm, you know, you can do that now too. I'm in but, the bathroom. Right. <laughs> but, 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 but there is something to say about you know the, the, the ability to sort of you know. Uh, have that have that visual um, documentation of what you've been doing day to day, so that your kids or your grandkids, I mean, I know minute by minute, but they're day by day. But at least it's something there. That's one way to look at it. Yeah. But you know, whatever. Selfie suck. All right. So, <laughs> uh, well, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yes. Last thing. Do you take selfies? No, I don't actually, and I don't know if that's because you know. No. Insecurity issues or no. whatever. I got a gap. I don't because insecurity I don't issues. I don't either. Do I don't you? either. Yeah. Only Joe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like every day, Akili. No. <laughs> I was gonna say only in the bedroom, brother. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. No. You doing bad right now, bro? Oh man. Are we you moving take on selfies the in the bedroom. Oh, Are we moving man. on to twerking. Is that what this is? I have no idea what that means or why I said that. <laughs> moving on, Southwest. <laughs> Uh, Southwest is the first to be <laughs> the first with gate to gate Wi Fi service. Uh, Finally, congratulations yes. to, to, to to Southwest. First of all, I love Southwest. Me too. Southwest is the way to go. I mean, they don't have a first class or anything like that, but you know they fly everywhere now. They got Business Select. Uh, I love it. It's it's fantastic. But you know we've been ever since in a post nine eleven world, it's it's been people have really been uh, clamping down on the use of. You know, electronics, you know, be, you know, while you're in the air. Mm -hmm. Then we sort of loosened it up a few years ago. Then the proliferation of Wi Fi, you know, um, it's became un is on planes. Uh, uh, Southwest has it on every plane, but we still don't have it gate to gate. We still have to shut it off when we, when, you know, when we, when we fly and then when we land. So now Southwest is, is like, F it. We could do it the whole time. I think yeah. this is fantastic. I mean, is this is this a problem? Do we think we have people on the phone talking? Because this is going to extend to also uh, cellular service as well. And the main reason why is because they realize the network that they use the Wi-Fi service on is completely different from the network that we're using the air traffic controller on. So right. there is no real interference in these days, you know. So right. I actually remember, I remember when I was a kid, I couldn't even use my little electronic, uh, you know, game. Not even, not even the game. I'm talking about the old school football. Uh, from, yeah, yeah, from, yeah. from Mattel, yeah. they were like, "Turn that off." Yeah. I'm like, what? you know." But uh, now, now the technology is such that these are two separate things. So I'm very, very happy about this. I mean, Absolutely. Man, well, you... yeah, this <laughs> follows the FAA uh, ruling finally that you can use uh, e-readers and tablets, and you can use your phones as long as you're not making phone calls on takeoff and landing. Right. So, uh, so now that you have your laptop on for example you you know what it makes sense to have wi-fi so thank god southwest is doing this uh, from what i've read somebody tried it out and it's not perfect uh -huh. you know i think i think in this day and age we really expect our wi-fi to be higher standards but 
it's a start. And what's great is, you know, how many people take business trips and stuff like exactly. that. And then you have exactly. to shut off your computer or whatever. Now you don't have to. Now you're hooked on the Internet. You could, you could stop making phone calls, but you could still send emails out. Right. You know, right. or you could send text, uh, texting services out, you know, through your Wi-Fi or whatever it is. Right. So, yeah, I totally, I totally love this. It's about time. Uh, the one thing that really jars me, though, the, the article that I did read, the guy who went on Southwest and did um, Gate to Gate, you know, he's taken vines of takeoff and landing. <laughs> and for some reason, maybe it's a 9-11 thing. It just freaks me out seeing photos of planes, inside planes, like during the actual flight. Right, yeah. right, right. So that kind of freaks me out a little bit. So And, and, and with that, possibly... I can see some privacy concerns going in there too, because uh, you're on a you're on a flight with 100, 200 people, and sure. you're, all of a sudden you're shooting video and you're and you're streaming it, or you're you're tweeting about it or vining it, and you know the people next to you might not want yeah. to be seen that much. I just I just uh, was on a Southwest flight, yeah. with uh, Questlove. Like we mm. we sat right next to each other, and I'm, mm -hmm. I sure as hell would have been like vining and soaking yeah. in and you know, but. So that, yeah, that is, I do agree that could be a, a problem privacy wise. I don't know, Brandon. What do, what do you think of this? I mean, you know, I, I, I agree with everything that you guys are saying, but then also just in regards to the phone, talking on the phone on the plane, being that you know sometimes you, you're sitting three people in a seat. So mm -hmm. if you got you know Clarissa at the, at the window seat, and then you got you know uh, Donovan in the middle seat, and then you have Bill in the left seat, and they're all talking to somebody. I mean, that's going to be pollution. noise yeah. pollution. You know what I mean? Then you got Sarah on this side. She's just trying to get some sleep. And then, right. you know, you got little Kevin, he on his game I that you were you talking everybody about. Everybody on your flight. You're Everybody's name. Exactly. But, but, I love this it. Is, but this is, this is kind of what, this is what we have to, as a society, really look, I mean, this, this that's, the, in my opinion, that's just basic etiquette, right? I mean, like, this is, this is in, in a world where we all can be connected and all can be talking, we can all at any given moment be doing something. There has to be a new set of like personal and, and public etiquette in, you know, to, to, to account for that. That's like back part. in the day, you couldn't really pull out your old your rotary phone and start dialing somebody in the middle yeah. of the thing. But now that we're in a world that we can talk, that doesn't mean we have to talk in front of everybody True. like that. So, I, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that people will adhere to those rules, but I think mm -hmm. that that's a lot larger discussion for me about, uh, you know, what's what's the new etiquette? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You the can't morals, do it. the phone morals. Yeah, because like, do my, my, like, I can just start filming you. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> like, you know, can I start talking? I, well, I, yeah. I think there's already etiquette. Like, I mean, because we have music devices, people don't play their fucking music on the airplane. They throw in their little earbuds. It'll right. be the same thing. I think people will, will naturally understand. It's not that like all the it's, age it's age not some guy's got his boombox hanging out. You're yes, all doing exactly. your commute yeah. with somebody or playing it, blasting their headphones like full blast. But I, I'm really excited about this because I, I do a lot of flying and. What I really would hope is that they have outlets, because then you can just plug up and like really just Virgin, get some, Virgin Virgin You're right, you're right. But I'm talking about Southwest. Yeah, Southwest. Put some outlets, outlets in there. I'm gonna get a lot of work done. I'm right. gonna be chilling. Absolutely. It's, it's gonna be but cool. I will say this, and, and this goes with selfie as well. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the one time in the plane you're, when you're you actually please, communicate, well, no, when you actually <laughs> communicate with the people around you, where you get to know the people's names, yeah. are those 10, 15 minutes before takeoff? When nothing. Or yeah, that's absolutely. when you get to communicate, or at the very least, you're taking off. You're like, holy crap, I'm scared. Yeah. You know? At the very least, and now that's it's organic like, expression, though. Yeah. Like you end up meeting some of the greatest people sitting beside you like right. just right. because of that 10 minutes of no internet or that 10 minutes and of, now imagine a plan of 200 people and they're all just focused on their laptops or on their tablets that's a, that's a good point yeah. you know? that's deep that's so, deep we'll i mean it's deep but i mean we obviously feel entitled to have our service i think all of us do even even yeah. with that complaint i'm happy to know i can turn on my uh laptop and do some work. Sure. This is, I mean, the last thing I'll say on this, we'll move on, is that this is, again, hitting the point I was making earlier, this is where our society's going. I mean, it's like the yeah. movie WALL-E, you know, everyone's everyone's plugged in. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, you you walked up up and down the streets in New York City, everyone's earbuds in, yeah. everyone's on their, on their thing. Uh, any subway in New York, uh, even here in L.A., mm -hmm. for those who do take the subway, um, everyone's you know, attached. Everyone's detached. Everyone's detached. So in the plane, I mean, it's kind of, I don't I know this is sort of a larger, larger societal problem here. I mean, this is, you know, the technology curve is always ahead of sort of the, the legal curve and also the societal curve. So yeah. we'll have to, we'll have to I think, sketch up. I think it's efficiency. Most people who take flights, they want to read. They want to they want yeah. they want to yeah. be able yeah. to, you know, interface with their with their content. And yeah. I, I think for me as a creative, like it's just time. That's yeah, time that I can use to produce. Yeah. Right? I, I, yeah. I like how Southwest just we we've we've, we've uh, delivered Gate to gate Wi-Fi. He was like, "What about the outlets?" <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, Akila, we just did this. But the thing, last point too. The thing is, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. No, no laptops yet. 
They won't allow you to do laptops yet. Oh. It's only tablets. Oh, really? Oh, only okay, tablets yeah. and cell phones. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I think that's Interesting. a space issue, right? It's exactly. out a big old laptop. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm that guy. Okay, so moving on. So we want to talk about, uh, you know, and going through some of these stories, realize that a lot of these have to do with where we're going. And this is Geek Nerd Tech. So uh, I, I, I'm going to call this segment sort of Welcome to the Future because these are all things that are like, I mean, talk about, you know, we talk about technology and how it affects us as a society. These are all stories that I found like, wow, this is like, we the future's here. It like, is. We, we, we've arrived, you know. Yeah. So I want to talk about some of these stories. One of the things that I found was um, this, the, you know, this big debate about QR codes on tombstones. Now wow. we all know what the QR code is. Uh, if you don't know what the QR code is, it's a little. If you see this little, uh, you know, I would say a, a futuristic barcode-looking thing, a square thing where you can scan with your phone or, or your or mobile device, it usually uh, links you off to some sort of content or information. And uh, you know, it was. It was really sort of a precursor to what maybe this augmented reality world where you lift up something, you can see all kinds of things through your phone. But this is, you know, this is happening now. QR codes are everywhere and they're useful and people are using them. So the question is, uh, it's t- uh, cemetery, the cemetery business, which is not known for being cutting edge under technology. <laughs> <laughs> but they are kind of ahead of the game. Is they decided that most, like our Arlington started, our Arlington National Cemetery uh, is doing it. And a lot of the cemeteries are adopting this, putting QR codes in a tombstone and one of the reasons why why this idea came, and speaking of selfie, is they they found there's a lot of people you know in front of tombstones doing selfies. That's a new trend, like in front of tombstone. So like it's kind of, then someone started thinking like, wow, this is where technology is here at the cemetery. What if and people were sort of offended by that, like you know, what if there was a way that you can actually you know scan the the tombstone and then get get a obituary, get information, get history. Uh, it sounds ridiculous now, but you know, maybe in five years, ten years, fifteen, a hundred years, you want to go and you want to. I want to know all about Nando Velasquez. You know, um, maybe I can do it. And I don't know if this is private. I don't know if is, this it, is, is it public. password protected? I, I, like, I, I you have know. no idea. But but I don't. What do you what, what do you what do you think about this, Brian? What do you think I, about I, this idea? I mean, I, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, as long as there is, uh, like I said, some type of privacy, because you could just go to anybody's tombstone and get you know all right. sorts of information. Well, but I mean, I, it's an obituary. Maybe if, if, if I'm saying it's a public obituary. Maybe the obituary is printed in the paper. Uh, so if it's, if it's public domain information, you and know. And I wonder, could you, like, uh, you know, if it was your mother or something like that, if you could upload home videos or yeah. whatever, what have um, you, of her. And, you know, who would edit that? You know what I mean? Does your son edit that? You know, yeah. did, does the, you know, uh, caretaker, you know, companies? I, I, new new, new revenue streams for the cemetery. I Absolutely. I have a different perspective. I think it's totally ridiculous. Uh-oh. I want my family, to, like you said, I want it to be completely private. I don't want the world knowing about my family. I want my family knowing about it. Well, I think that's just too much. There's too much access to, to, like for me, family is like a cutoff point. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to get everything. And that's that's giving away gems. You well, know what then, then, then let me just philosophically. It's not just your privacy. It's your family's privacy. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. Well, okay, philosophically, like you have a, you know, this is uh, just sort of an extension of Tombstone. This is a whole other philosophical question. Some people like, look, I need a small cross unmarked grave. I know where it is. This is my family. Some want a, a little plaque. Some people want an elaborate tombstone. Some people want a giant sarcophagus or something like a giant thing, you know. And I don't, I mean, it really depends on what, like how you want the world to see the your, people. The legacy you're saying? Yeah, well, I mean. Codes and legacy. Well, I don't know. So Check out my legacy. But I'm saying it's a personal because some people, like I said, what, what I, you know, uh, yeah, I know that you know, my father, very small plaque. Some people want a gigantic thing to make yeah. it, to honor them in a gigantic way. It's like mummies back in the day. They right. would go to, you know, they would be buried with all their jewels, all their jewels and things and of that nature. Else. So then when we die, we could have a huge, you know, Tupac type hologram right. from Coachella <laughs> of ourselves <laughs> sitting on our, you know, what I mean, on our tombstone. And, and if you want that, like you said, then right. you should you should be entitled to have it. I agree. Right. I agree. I don't know. Well, We'll see. That's that, that, well, Nando, do you have any th- final thoughts on this? Yeah, I was going to say, what it, would it be like Wikipedia where anyone can just like start changing information? Like, oh, <laughs> I didn't like that guy. I didn't like that guy. So yeah. let me just add that. I, you know what I think? I Here think... lies this MF. <laughs> <laughs> he stole my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Such a jerk. But, That's uh, crazy. But what I, what I want to say is I'm surprised this is a debate. Uh, I, I don't know if Arlington actually okayed it yet. I think Arlington's debating mm. whether or not they should use a QR code still. But I'm surprised. I would think that unless it's something that's very uh, Oh, you're right. Obscene. I'm sorry. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Arlington's not used it yet. Yeah, not, but they, it's a big discussion over there, and obviously it's a big discussion. I think if you want to put it on there, you should be allowed to. If It's up to you, just like the way you use your privacy. Right. If you want to put something up there, you should. You shouldn't be told not to. So I'm a little surprised by their decision not to allow QR codes. What, because I think it's tacky? I mean, you could think, have a tacky tombstone and do all sorts of crazy things think, on it. I think it makes sense for the military, because when you see all those those tomb, those 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 
grave sites. Yeah. It's hard to pinpoint and locate. You know, maybe maybe you went to war with someone and you mm. check out their name. Like, oh, I went to I'm on, on the same battlefield or yeah. on the same but- and I platoon see, with them. Or and I could see celebrities doing this because if anyone has edited content already, it's celebrities. Like if yeah. you went on Michael Jackson's uh, tombstone over at Hollywood Forever Cemetery and they had a QR code, you can pull up yeah, videos him, of him or know, something like that. Things, I could yeah. see I could see stuff like <laughs> dancing, people just dancing. Yeah. But I could see stuff like that a little bit more with more um, public figures. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll see how this goes. It's yeah. interesting. Uh, moving on. So uh, the LA Auto Show is in town this week, and, mm. and we're we're here in Los Angeles, and uh, uh, the Auto Show is, is is here. And one of the things that we see and we're talking about here are the proliferation of these hydrogen cars, the the, the hydrogen fuel cell cars, which are really you know an amazing technology that sort of is rivaling electric. I mean, look, I anything that's that's going to maybe get us off fossil fuels, in my opinion, is fantastic. But you do have a choice now whether uh, Detroit is sort of going the way of the hydrogen cell car um, or the electric car. And this year, a lot of, lot of hydrogen cars are, are around. I mean, I know that, um, uh, you know, everyone, I know the big one that I'm really looking forward to seeing is the Aston Martin has a hydrogen car, which I don't, you know, which, hmm. which looks fantastic. But everyone from, you know, Hyundai to, I mean, Ford's been on top of it, Toyota, uh, well, all, all, everyone, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, that there still is some opposition to it. Uh, right. Not really opposition to it, just as far as how soon they can bring out the hydrogen cars. Right. They're, they're, they're going to be in direct competition with electric cars. They last longer, the fuel cells for the hydrogen, they last longer than electric cars, and it'll be faster to recharge, to refuel, because mm. you're just pretty much plugging it in, <laughs> as opposed to uh, electric cars where you... It's an outlet. You have to charge it just like you charge your phone or something, uh, or, or something similar. But uh, the, the good thing about this too is the vapor that uh, the exhaust is water vapor, right. Right. so which is great. Right, right now, um, Hyundai, Honda, and uh, Toyota mm -hmm. are all have shown either at the Tokyo Auto Show, which is also happening right now, or the LA Auto Show, shown their brands, and they're they're expecting a rollout around 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Toyota is the only one that says 2015 in. Japan and in 2016 in the US. Uh, right now, a couple of the other ones, Nissan is one of them, and I believe Tesla, they both say that the fuel cell technology is not going to be available to consumers till 2020. I mean, Tesla, I mean, obviously, Tesla is an electric car company, so they have, they have a little, I mean, they're not going to be. Yeah. Exactly, championing fuels, yeah. fuel sale. <laughs> and the other big Technology. problem is, of course, uh, here in LA we see a lot more electronic cars, electric cars. Excuse me, but uh, uh, Tesla's Tesla's blowing up here, in Los and it's blowing up here because they're more fueling stations. But right. that's that's the big concern with hydrogen right now. Yeah, if so they a, if they market it now, they have to have more fueling. It's stations. It's an issue of infrastructure. Yeah. Like, from what I read, it says twenty to thirty years out before it'll be more you know mainstream. Mm -hmm. But I mean, to me, like to make hydrogen, you need electricity. Yeah. So. And the problem with it is like the efficiency. Like you have to go through these certain patterns to get to make the hydrogen. It takes longer than it does to plug in an electric car. Right. And so that's why I don't think I don't think I don't think it'll be popping. I think the, electric, the electrical cars will be way more technologically advanced in 20 years versus the hydrogen car. Well, I, I agree. I mean, I think it's interesting. Well, like I said, I, like I said at the top, I do agree. Just look, I like anything to get us off fossil fuels. But it seems that Detroit is. It, you know, the Detroit mainstream companies are embracing the hydrogen cars quicker than the than the uh, electric cars, and I wonder if this is just has to do with. I feel like there's something behind that. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I get suspicious when all the big companies are like, well, we don't do electric, but we'll all do hydrogen. Like I don't know why that is exactly, but I know, um, uh, you know, I know, Brandon. This is the sort of a little bit, sm almost kind of in your wheelhouse in terms of like, well, you know, where we're going, but. Uh, you, uh, I mean, I know you were out, you know, uh, a, a, a bit last night and saw some of the, the Cadillac, Cadillac stuff. Yeah, electric. yeah, they had the uh, the Cadillac uh, ELR. Uh, shout out to Sabin Blake uh, that I'm giving him a shot right now because <laughs> I know it's the car he's marketing, um, and it's an electric car, and it it was pretty as hell, man, pretty and hmm. quiet as hell. He pulled right. up on me, quiet, <laughs> super <laughs> yeah, quiet, gonna, and, and one of the things that they talked about last night because it was uh, it was at the African American uh, Museum. Uh, over there at USC, and they and they talked about charging stations not in the African American community. Mm. So for that reason, a lot of people were kind of like, you know, well, we would buy an electric car and especially a Cadillac because the whole Cadillac African American, you know, we have a relationship, mm. I suppose. Right. Um, but like I said, there's there's no charging stations. You know, what I mean, you ain't gonna find no charging so no stations access. in Christian. So it's no, yeah. it's no, you know, yeah, it's no right. access. Mm. I mean, well, it, that's interesting. So okay. Uh, the other, uh, well, you know, I will we'll see how it works out. You yeah. know, I like the idea of it. We'll see what happens with it. The future's here, though. 
least we're doing something about it. Yeah. Uh, so moving on, uh, what about these robot suits for the paralyzed, Akili? Like, this is something that we saw that was pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. It's an alternative to a wheelchair. And essentially, they put a cap on um, a guy's head, and, and this cap um, pretty much detects your brain waves. And so if you decide to say, I want to move left, or I want to move right or forward, the the electrodes, the the electro the electrodes and electric nodes, excuse me, pick up a brain pattern. And they send this information to a computer, and it makes it makes your leg move. So this is something that is a hard one, like the Matrix, like hard wired into your brain, or is it just no? Like, it's a like cap. A cap? It's, as you see, that guy has a white. But I don't cap understand on. how that works. I mean, how could how could a cap? Because it's have... reading the brain signals, right? But and not so, with not like hardwired. Like you know, I'm I'm really being literal here. It's not like there's no wires no. into your you know. It's detecting a brain signal that's, wow. that's, and then based on patterns, based on information that's already stored in the, in the computer. Oh, well, I'm detecting this brain wave, so that wow. means move left. So I'm going to move left, so, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, the applications for for the handicapped or and disabled are obviously limitless, but you can't help but think about applications for uh, for military and other things like that. I think I think RoboCop, I exactly. think the Matrix, yeah. Iron Man, you know. it's coming out. <laughs> RoboCop is coming out actually right. uh, early next yes, year. Yes, I, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know, well, we'll, we'll, but that looks fantastic. Uh, I want to move on to the soccer ball because um, this is something that I think is really, really cool. I mean, I think that you know, soccer is one of the, is the, the largest, one of the largest sports in the in the in the world actually. And we're always like, you know, philanthropists are trying to always trying to figure out ways to get uh, two things to uh, underdeveloped nations: either water or electricity, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a really cool thing. There's a soccer ball that's been developed that. Is a it allows children to play with the soccer ball all day, and then it serves as a battery charger to bring electricity and lives uh, and lights to the to the to the villages. I think this is like something that is fantastic, and this is uh, you know uh, uh, even President Obama tried one, and uh, you know in a world where you know water and light are you know things we take for granted are, are, are uh, not available to the rest of the world to be able to have something like as simple as a soccer ball hmm. to be able to do this is fantastic hmm. to me i don't know i just want to bring that up i don't know if anybody has a comment on it i liked it i think I it's awesome yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. i can't wait to see more of that stuff yeah, yeah. yeah it's cool okay, yeah it's great. that's it that's all i got on that <laughs> uh all right so uh, been briefly, I do want to talk about this. You know, we, we're, we're talking about green jobs. We're going to get to this a little later. You know, with you, Brandon. But uh, you know, uh, there's a, there's a Black Enterprise had an interesting article about uh, you know black folks and green jobs. And I think that like you know, um, we you know President Obama has or you know a couple of years ago was really heavy on the way to sort of help this economy and help our country get back to where we used to be was is to have this sort of uh, Proliferation of more green jobs, and these green jobs are going to. This green technology is going to help save uh, the people who aren't working, and that's all great. But what studies are finding is that these green jobs aren't necessarily meeting um, coming to the areas that need them, the urban areas where the black folks and Latino folks are. So the people who need these green jobs the most and need the training of the green jobs the most, it's sort of the whole thing is missing the people who need it the most. And this is a this is a huge problem. So uh, people like Van Jones and other ones have, 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 have mentioned this. And, you know, Obama, this being sort of one of his main initiative, initiatives and as the first African-American president, I feel like that this is a sort of a huge miss here and I don't know I don't want Brandon do you want to speak to this at all uh, I mean I mean I think you kind of hit it right on the head just in regards to it not being in the areas where you know the the urban demographic is you know what I mean so it's hard to employ somebody if the, the office is you know 20 miles away and you're taking the metro whatever what have you so I, I think you hit it right on the head man I, I have nothing else to say on that you hit it right on the head so we'll see this is you know uh, uh, Lisa P. Jackson uh, who you know was really sort of really really very vocal about this and uh you know we'll, we'll, we'll see i don't know we'll see where we'll see where this goes i mean we can i want to talk a little bit more about this a little later but uh in the meantime i do want to very quickly nando shift gears shift and shift gears shift, dramatically sir. dramatically and talk about your favorite time of the year <laughs> <laughs> christmas black friday black friday yeah, yeah black friday uh black friday <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that graphic. Yes, I like that graphic. Yeah, I Things not to buy on Black Friday. Yeah, that's, that's what you're gonna tell us. What, what, what not to buy, Nando? What no, not kidding, to buy? No. Uh, actually, you can go to the next slide. So tell, tell us about tell us about what's what's happening for Black Friday. I need some Black Friday deals, predictions. What do you got? Well, Black Friday. I mean, look, it, it, this was a holiday. It used to be. It wasn't really a holiday. This used to be a day that was only known to people who work in the retail industry because it was the best 
shopping day of the year, the day where all these retail outlets could make the most money. And in recent years, everyone's just caught on to what it's about. And they've made this into actually an unofficial holiday, the Friday after Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Phil. Depending on who you talk to, it's all that's good in the world or all that's bad in the world. Because uh, you end up seeing, especially in the news stories, people lining up hours and hours before stores open up. And, uh, There's always just like to a get scrap. There's always like somebody, somebody's getting trampled or somebody's yeah. getting socked up. Somebody's getting yeah. scrap. There's a scrap. There's a trample. There's like a, sometimes there's a shooting. <laughs> like yeah. People are dead serious on Black Friday. It's crazy. And people lining up earlier and earlier. And there's stores matching that demand by opening up earlier and earlier. Mm. So uh, I believe last year stores were opening up at midnight. So uh, how yeah. much earlier could they open up? Why don't we just open up on Thanksgiving? Screw your dinner. Screw, <laughs> screw hanging out with the family. That's not what Thanksgiving's about. Yeah. Thanksgiving's about buying stuff. <laughs> well, who has well, right now? Who has the best deals, Nando? Like who 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 has some of the best? Well, stuff? When, if you're looking at, I mean, there's deals for everything, no matter what you're into. But In for our the, world, for the our tech world, world the for tech. the tech world right now, I mean, the three biggies I would say are Walmart. Best Buy and Target, and okay. of course, Am and, and you can't discount Amazon, which obviously Cyber has Monday. amazing deals, and they'll have even more on Cyber Monday. Exactly. Yeah. So, in fact, the you were saying this before, uh, Brandon, before it went on. I mean, Black Friday's turned into Brown Thursday. Yeah, That's Brown really Thursday. What it is. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, this point. what is what is Brown Thursday? Brandon? Brown Thursday is I think Target and some other stores are actually opening up, like you had just said on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's Brown Thursday. So, like you said, screw your dinner. You know, forget the greens and go get that TV or that. PlayStation 4. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 just, I'm highly offended. I'm not offended. I just, all of these Brown Thursday, Green Tuesday, <laughs> Cyber Monday, Black Friday. I'm like, ugh. It just feels like such a... Yeah, it's crazy. It's such crazy. A, a, a consumer, you know, push. But a lot of people look forward to this, and you know, some people actually wait for the holiday season because they know these deals are coming, yeah, whether it's on right. Amazon online or whether they can go to these stores. I mean, yeah. uh, so for example, right now, all the hubbub about the iPads and the iPad minis, you can yep. actually get an iPad mini 16 gigabyte uh, with 16 gigs and a hundred dollar gift card from Walmart right. for two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Right. Now that's a good that, that's, that's that's a, a really deal. tricky way because Apple's very strict about Apple doesn't really give deals, deals yeah. you know, yeah. any deals on hardware. But what what Walmart's able to do there is say, okay, we'll give you this for two ninety nine, but we'll give you we'll give you our money. Yeah. Here's an extra hundred dollars. Here's an extra hundred dollars so, too. You know, that's, that's a smart that's yeah. a smart move. So yeah, so they're definitely doing that. And then also uh, Best Buy is also doing an Apple iPad two, just an iPad two though. So it's not the newer models, but still sixteen gigabytes. Of a Wi-Fi uh, for two hundred ninety-nine dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, great deal. And then what about you big screens. I need some. Big, uh, guys <laughs> like the big screen deals. Funny you should say big screens. Uh -oh. uh, Walmart's got a Vizio, sixty-inch smart LED uh -huh. HD TV. And uh -huh. Vizio, I like Vizios. They're they're a cheap brand usually, but but they're really good quality. I, I have one. I love it. Uh, so sixty-inch for six hundred and eighty-eight dollars. So is, how, how big is that again? Sixty-inch. All right, I'm gonna catch you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Get in line now. Sit out there real quick. <laughs> LG's got a today? LG's got a fifty-five-inch. Uh, TV, uh, 1080p, 120 uh, hertz, LED, uh, HDTV for 500 bucks. Wow. 499. So I'm a, I'm a coin. Inch. The Friday before Black Third is Friday um, is Gray Friday. I'm a coin that one. That's this Friday. <laughs> Gray Friday. And then uh, Target's got a 50 inch Element. Uh, I'm not so sure about the Element brand to be honest with you, but it's 1080 LED for 229 dollars. Okay, well, wow, okay. Yeah, and there's some other deals too. There's some other TV ones. Those are the ones that stood out. Uh, you can get all sorts of stuff. I mean, Beats by Dr. Dre solo headphones for 114 dollars. Solos, so okay. So that's pretty good. Solos right. for 115. That's pretty good. All right. Well, yeah. well, that, that, you know, look, well, I'm, well, I'm sure I have more to say on this. LG's uh, got a Blu-ray player, a Blu-ray player uh -huh. for 38 dollars. Wow. Now, of course, a lot of these are doorbusters, so you got to line up. Yeah. Early in advance, and I believe Amazon also just to to compensate they they up their sh their free shipping uh, right. up ten dollars. So that's the first time they've done that. So yeah, everyone's obviously getting on board. Uh, everyone's very optimistic. Also, usually, uh, what's great about retail and, and for sales is they base their uh, they can tell how good the economy is doing based on sales on Black Friday. Right. If people want to give up the dough to get some of these things. Right. So, yeah. So, again, it's a really good one. I, I would suggest to definitely look at the big three. There are a lot of Black Friday sites. Usually, um, there are a lot of sites, that, independent sites, that they pull all the ads ahead of time, and you can do one-stop shopping there so you can know exactly where you want to wait in line for uh, to go to, and you can compare notes on all of them. Well, next Friday is Black Friday. We yes. will I'm not, not sure here. if we'll be will not be here. We will so not be here. This is our Black we'll Friday. We'll be lining preview. up. <laughs> we'll be lining up. <laughs> <laughs> will they come back? That, that sounds like a cliffhanger.
Will they come back? <laughs> Will they come back? I don't know. We'll see. Tune in same bad we'll time. Get same Black Hollywood time. Uh, yeah. Leave well, cool. Song. Thank you for that. Thank you very much for that. Sure. So uh, I do uh, now. I want you know I wanted to have a, 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 quick, a brief discussion about viral videos, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to forego that because I want to really get into Brandon um, and and what he's doing. But before we get into that, I want to talk about. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us here on iTunes and downloading us here on iTunes. Uh, we are a brand new show. We're six deep, and uh, we're really trying to best our best to give you uh, some geek culture, nerd culture, and, and tech news from a black and brown perspective. Yep. And um, you know, hopefully, you like what we're doing, and we'll continue to do more. Please rate us and uh, and give us your comments. and And you can also check us out on YouTube, and of course, on Black Hollywood Live. Uh, dot com. So thank you very much for listening, downloading to us, downloading us on iTunes. Uh, so I really now want to welcome our guest Brandon. Properly welcome Brandon. Yo, <laughs> welcome Brandon. How you doing? Uh, from Broccoli City. Uh, you know, Brandon is the. Watch well, like, out, Brandon. Tell, tell tell us about tell us a little bit about Broccoli City. <laughs> yeah, man, Broccoli City. Uh, uh, Broccoli City is a social enterprise. Uh, where we focus on bridging the gap between the urban community and the eco-friendly community through awareness. Mm. And uh, we do this by using different strategic and creative uh, ways to touch the community. Uh, you know, we do, uh, one of the big things that, that, that we're gearing up to do right now is a huge Earth Day festival, uh, which will be entitled the Broccoli City Festival, and it will be happening in Los Angeles April 26th. Earth Day. 2014. <laughs> and, and, and actually, Earth Day is on the 22nd, but... Uh, you know, everybody probably be at Coachella around that time. You know what I mean? So we so we pushed it back. Um, How did you conceive the idea of Broccoli City? Oh man, I'm I'm from a place called Greensboro, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, so so when I moved to Los Angeles, y'all said, hmm, like no, no, because it's, it's green, because green is right in the name. Yeah, absolutely, it's absolutely, just green. Yeah, so I, I moved to, to uh, I moved to Los Angeles, California, and uh, I was working in a T-shirt. Uh, shop on Melrose, and uh, I was introduced to Crooks and Castles. Yes. Now, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that brand, uh, but I was completely blown away that these brothers were doing T-shirts and making money. I was just completely blown away, and I said, "Yo, so you're you're doing T-shirts, you're making money." So I thought to myself, "What how, what brand could I come up with?" You know what I mean? Los Angeles is full of entrepreneurs, and I got that whole you know that that spirit on me. Uh, so Broccoli City is what I used to call Greensboro when I was in college. Mm. So a girl would say, "Hey." Hey, where you from? And I say Broccoli City, boo. And she'd be like, oh, Broccoli <laughs> City, you know, not knowing that it was just, you know, Greensboro, right. North Carolina. <laughs> the name, uh, the name, once I started, you know, I started doing T-shirts and things of that nature with no sp specific uh, meaning behind them or anything. It was just Broccoli City. Uh, my brother's friend in Atlanta was like, when I think of Broccoli City, I think of weed or going green or something of that nature. So I'm yeah. like, man, like, I don't, I don't want to do nothing with no weed, but... Well. Uh, dispensary. Where's your dispensary? You know, <laughs> and it's funny. There, there was a clear path. You could have went this way or this uh, way. Yeah, it's funny. I have a friend who actually wanted to name some 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 marijuana uh, broccoli city because he thought it'd be a cool little name. But right. I told him I had to make sure it was you know the highest. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So anyway, long story short, uh, we started doing the t-shirts on organic cotton because mm -hmm. I thought that would be a cool idea. Mm. Uh, and the more and more I learned about the whole organic lifestyle, the more and more I wanted to share it with people. But yet again, I have a lot of things that I'm working on personally. Like I told you earlier, I'm not in here in hemp sandals with a hemp necklace or anything. Right. I have on a sweat sh uh, sweatsuit uh, and some Air Force Ones, you right. know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it really was just about showing that message from somebody who looks just like you. And it's just sharing the information. Right. I've never tried to, you know, preach to anybody or anything like that. It's just... This is some information that you probably need to know. There's some food you probably need to be eating. You, you probably need to be exercising. I can tell by your feet and your face and your hands, right. whatever the case may be. Uh, so, yeah, we just wanted to give you that message and deliver it in a cool way so that you can understand it. Well, no, I just, this is interesting to me because... Uh, you know, we you know we we think of black folks. You think of the the word it invokes evokes the word urban, obviously. Yeah. Uh, which which because we you know most of us are you know congregated ur urban areas in mm -hmm. the city. When you think of urban, you do not think of green. And we, mm -hmm. most of us come from the cities and and and, and, and you know, uh, the concrete jungles mm -hmm. of, of the country as as you, as you would do Nando, New York. Yeah, New York, uh, Big Apple. Not not the, not the weird greenest. green name for New York. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but not the greenest places in the world. So uh, what I think, but it's very important for, for like green lifestyle and organic lifestyle and healthy lifestyle style to be to reach and be taught to you know not only young African Americans and and Latinos uh, uh, but everybody so what, what, what how is why is it important for you to get this message to our our people into the city yeah I mean when I when I say urban I don't even necessarily mean 
just African Americans and and Latinos. I think of I think of the EDM culture. Mm -hmm. I think of you know everybody who is just a young person. And you know right now it's so you know with the whole Levi's culture it's so. Uh, Re, you know, revolt against the world, like, right. ah, we, we hate everything, you know, uh, we're about ourselves, whatever the case may be. So it, it, it's really about a delicate balance. Right. You know what I mean? At, uh, I, I could chill with Akili. We can go to the club. I can drink Patron. I can wild out. And then on Tuesday, I might call him and say, hey, you want to go hoop? Right. You want to go play some ball real quick? You know what I mean? Just for an hour, whatever, what have you, and chop it up. It's all about the delicate balance. Even if we right. go back to the selfies. If you go and look at Instagram right now and you type in, you know, fitness or getting myself right, girl, you'll probably see a million, you know what I mean, hashtags of extremely beautiful women, by the way, right. working out, you know what I mean, getting their bodies in shape, men doing the same thing. And, of course, it's a vanity issue sometimes. But, I mean, that's good, you know what I mean, whatever whatever gets you to the gym, whatever gets you working out, whatever gets you right. And, and like I said, it's a, it's a balance. So, and I hope I didn't go in the no, no. super circle. So you do a lot of initiatives. You throw events. You have you curate a blog. Yes, like, how, how do you educate you know, how, how better can we educate the people? Man, I, I, I think it's about bringing it to them, you know what I mean? Bringing it to them, and like I spoke on earlier, it's the medicine and the dog food. You have to get them there first. And even the event I went to last night with uh, uh, electric cars uh, for Cadillac, the, the ELR, it was extremely boring. Mm. I'm going to keep it so real with y'all. It was the most boringest thing I've been to in a very, mm. very going long time. Heads. Yeah, it was just like, yo, and it's just preaching to the choir. Like, if I'm, if I'm talking about the green movement, then I'm not going to talk to somebody else who's in the green movement i'm gonna talk to somebody who you know it's like you guys you know what i mean with the geek stuff like you're not gonna talk to another geek because he already knows everything about star wars you're not telling him nothing that he doesn't know already right. so it's about saying well, I, might, I might i know a lot about star wars oh that's cool <laughs> <laughs> i know some stuff you don't we know, can actually brother. have that conversation afterwards <laughs> no, uh, but uh yeah i mean it's, it's just really about uh and I'm going to say it again, the medicine and the dog food. You have to show them mm. the culture that they want to see first and then educate them after or during. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's that. So you have a lot of, like, convergence. Like, you already kind of, like, alluded to it, like, using music, using fashion mm -hmm. with, you know, these initiatives. And yeah. I think that's really cool about the brand, that you're able to have an event where you have someone perform and then you have booths and you have information. Like, Absolutely. all that combined, I think, is really effective. Absolutely. Like, so tell me about this event coming up more in, in April. Oh, man, uh, the, the, the Broccoli City Festival is going to be super exciting. Uh, we're, we're looking to have some pretty big, big headlines. Liners, and it's going to be everything that kind of Keely just touched on. We're going to have everything from yoga out there the day of to, you know, a fresh food market. You know what I mean? Great hip-hop acts, EDM DJs. It's going to be an all-day affair. Uh, working on right now to see if we can make it a family-friendly event. And it's funny because this actually ties back into geek culture, and I'm going to see what, what you guys' thoughts on this. Um, but something that I've, I've really, you know, been keen to lately is the festival life. Yeah. And what that's doing to music. And I know you, we are on iTunes right now. And uh, music now, you get music whenever. I, if somebody drops something, Akili, you, you spit a rhyme, I can get that music the next day. So what's the next step? The next step is having people on the ground at your concert, whatever the case may be, right? So how does the artist get that out? Through what we talked about, through those selfies, mm -hmm. through the technology realm. And that's kind of how, and that's where the, the game is going, I think, with music. I think next year we're going to see a lot of festivals for all sorts of reasons. You know what I mean? The Pick My Nose Fest, the, the, <laughs> the you know, I Got a Big Booty Festival. I think they're all coming because at the end of the day, that's the only way that I think these music companies or businesses can really obtain well, some, some, some financial. Well, no, they're, they're, well they're, they're experiential. Like, this, yeah, that's a thing. absolutely. I mean, it's one thing to be able to listen to the music and, and obviously one, another thing to be able to go to a concert and, and, and see the artist, which is, mm -hmm. which is primarily how the record industry makes yeah. for money. You can't but pirate experiential experiences. Right, but there's a whole other thing to be able to, you know, throw a festival or event with a bunch of like-minded individuals. And a so, purpose. So, and go. a purpose. So, so, this, so, so, so the things that you, what you're talking about doing, uh, you know, with Broccoli City is, you know, we're trying to not only get a bunch of like-minded young people together who like the who may like these these musics and and and, and these things, but also maybe a part of this lifestyle. And if they're not part of this lifestyle, there's an opportunity for the, you to educate them on this lifestyle. Absolutely, and Absolutely. this is sort of what. Uh, the mission statement of Broccoli City Absolutely. is, you know, it's really basically, if, if, if I got this right, it's really basically you want to figure out ways to reach uh, a certain demographic, be it millennials, be it uh, yes. you know, uh, young Latinos and Black folks, yeah. urban folks. Um, 
a way to reach them with this message of clean living, organic yeah. living, uh, sustainability. And give them a choice. Give them a choice, right? Give them a so, choice. That's it. Uh, and he's doing it through all these cool things, which I think yeah. is fantastic. And now the question I have for you is how do, I mean, you know, as, as, a, as a, you know, because you're a lifestyle company as well, are you getting attention from other, like the Cadillacs of the world who say, you know what, I want to, you know, hire you and use and, and, you know, help have Broccoli City help get our message out to these people. I mean, yeah. is that, is that, is that happening? Is yeah, that, is, yeah, is that it is happening. Model? Yeah, it is happening. Um, we were, uh, Ford actually reached out to us um, wanting to do some things. They have uh, like four electric cars and they're trying to touch a certain demographic. And I talked to a young brother last night in regards to Cadillac. And of course they are a luxury brand. Right. So, you know, you have to move to kind of Chevrolet where they got things. This so, you know right. twelve thousand dollars and sixteen thousand. Right. Uh, but but yeah, absolutely. And we're also working with the city of D.C. We're going to be doing it in D.C. again. Uh, we did it in D.C. this past April. Uh, we brought in over seven thousand individuals. Uh, Big Crit performed, mm-hmm. which I thought was super cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mayor Mayor Vincent Gray came out and oh, supported. Wow. And then we actually they actually reached out to us and we did an, another event for them in October called the Smile Project, uh, which was a, a street carnival. Uh, where we gave out a good 500 tickets to the inner schools in uh, Washington, D.C. Then it was just kind of rides and games. It was kind of the same thing right. as the Brackley City Festival, but geared toward children and activity. So, yes, uh, to answer your question, some people are, you know, coming at us for things like that. But we're trying to work harder and make it bigger. And uh, Broccoli City, at the end of the day, is, is cash money records. And, and I'm going to say that uh, in regards to, I don't know if you guys remember this time, but when uh, Baby, I guess we'll say like Baby, <laughs> Baby and those guys, they did it all themselves. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what really I mean? Fun. And I think that's 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 where we're going, a lot of private investment. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we don't need your help because we want to get this message out to the community and we're also going to make it sustainable oh. by giving people in the community volunteer jobs. You know what I mean? You can come. You can volunteer. I'm going to pay you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't just going to come out here and have a good time. You're going to get paid for your time, but you're also going to have a good time, too. But it's also about creating that economy. And also with the Broccoli City Festival, we do want small businesses to come, and we charge a very, very small fee to have a vendor space there and be able to get your message out to the community as well. And I look for young African Americans and Hispanics small businesses uh, first. Cool. Absolutely. I mean, that's awesome, man. Yeah. A few years ago, we connected at the beach, and you had the cameras out. Yeah. And you came up to me, and you asked me, uh, what does it mean to be organic? Yeah. So I thought the same question to you. What yeah. does it mean to be organic from your perspective? Oh, man. Uh, it, it's, uh, man, being organic is being you, man. Being yourself, man. Like, chilling. It's all good. It's all good, man. Be yourself. Um, yeah, keep it real. And I hate to say that because that's so, what, like Cliche. the 90s? Yes, yeah, yeah. like a uh, Hillman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> keep it real, yo. <laughs> uh, but nah, keep it, keep it, keep it 100. Keep it organic. And I think that's what you, that's what you said. Yeah. That's exactly what you said. <laughs> keeping yeah. it real, keeping it uh, 100. And yeah, that, that, uh, that's well, my spill. Well, that's, that, that's fair. There's a lot more that I want to get to. We're, for, we're out of time. I want to get to, like, you know, talking about green technologies and job and, yeah, and Star Wars. Ro- leadership, that, ro- leadership roles and green, you know, and green technologies. But I just do want to, uh, to um, uh, end it by just talking about just saying what you just said about organic is sort of keeping it 100, keeping it real. I mean, I think mm-hmm. that it does have that double meaning when it's not just Absolutely. about living organic and feeling organic. It's also being true to yourself and everything Absolutely. else. So there's a message there you can bring to young people, urban people, millennials about, Absolutely. you know, keep, you know, uh, it's not the message that Levi's is given, which is we're millennials, yeah. F everybody. Yeah. But nah. it is more along the lines of, look, we can be keep it, be ourselves and, 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 and be true to ourselves, but also live this lifestyle and share and help others as well. So Absolutely. I think it's a fantastic message. Brand Brandon, I think thank you so so much for coming oh, through. Really appreciate thank you. you. Uh, where, where, where can we find you? We tell me about you. Know, give me your Twitter. Give me your Facebook. What, give oh me man, uh, it's, it's Broccoli City. Everything. Uh, B R O C C O L I C I T Y dot com. Uh, we have a Tumblr. BroccoliCity.tumblr.com. Right. Oh, my music is coming in too. Oh, that's like okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so Broccoli City at Broccoli City on Instagram and uh, Twitter as well. And uh, yeah, man, we'll be coming. Uh, yeah, you'll you'll hear about us real soon. Cool. We'll be Broccoli looking out City. for you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, brothers. Thank for coming you. Through, Appreciate Thank you. you. Uh, Nando, where can we find you, sir? You can find me on Twitter at Nando Vell and A N D O V E L, and on AfterBuzz for shows like Homeland, Walking mm-hmm. Dead, and The Blacklist. Oh, with you. Oh, with me. Yeah. Cool. cool. Uh, Akili Shine, where can we find you? Yes, you can find me at liveelevated.com and behindthehustle.com. Check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Akili Shine. Akili Shine. Good. I'm Joe Braswell. You can find me on Twitter at 
at JoeKBraswell.com on Instagram at JoeBraswell.com. Also on After Buzz, uh, doing some shows uh, with Nando, The Blacklist. Um, I don't know. Extra. Uh, Grantland. Uh, Grantland, ESPN. I don't know. I'm everywhere. He needs a QR code. Find me. He needs a QR code. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us again. Thanks for joining Geek Nerd Tech. We're the show that breaks down nerd culture, tech news from a brown and black geek perspective. I'm going to get this right. I wrote it. I can't get it right. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Oh, in two weeks. Thank you. Bye. Dope. <laughs> From producers Maria Manunas, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Dario Kristen, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network. If you have questions or comments, tweet us at BHL Online or email us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. For more exclusive content, visit blackhollywoodlive.com. This has been a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network. Hollywood Redefined. Find it. The views expressed here are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.